Heat capacity is the ability for an, for an object to, to hold heat. And it, it tells you how much you have to increase, how much heat you have to put into an object to increase its temperature by one degree. So the specific heat capacity, OK, we're on the pen. Perfect. The uh, specific heat capacity of solids and liquids. The situation with gases is different and a little bit subtle. You have to worry about whether your this uh, change, whether you're adding heat to the object at constant pressure or constant volume. But for solids and liquids, uh, the situation is pretty simple. And the heat supplied, so this Q we're going to use to denote the heat added. We talked about heat and it being measured in joules, so it's really an amount of energy added to an object in order to raise its temperature. So this is a relationship between the, the amount of heat added and the temperature change of the object. Well, you might guess that the bigger the object, the more mass of the, that the object has, the more heat that you would need to add to raise the temperature. That's why this proportionality with the mass is important here. You might also guess that the greater the amount that you want to raise the temperature by, the greater amount of heat you'll need to add to raise that temperature. So that's those two proportionalities. And the constant of proportionality is called the specific heat capacity. Well, Q, the heat added, is measured in joules. Mass is measured in kilograms. Delta T is measured in degrees C. So the specific heat capacity, in order for those units to work out right, has to be measured in joules per kilogram per degree C in such a way that if you multiply by mass, that'll ki kill the kilograms. Multiply by delta T, that'll kill the degree C, and that'll give you joules uh, as the final answer. Uh, the distinction, uh, OK, let's see. Yeah, other units, which you might see in the problems, um, if we have one on the test, I will give this to you. This is not, I'm not requiring you to know these, but it's nice to know them, that joule is a measure of energy. It's also, um, well, let me look at this one first. One calorie, so-called, that you talked about in, in chemistry is 4.186 joules. That's the relationship between calories and joules. And one kilocalorie is 1,000 calories. And that's 4,186 joules. A kilocalorie is actually what we call uh, a calorie in normal uh, language. When you talk about a 2,000 or 3,000 calorie per day calorie diet, we're really actually talking about kilocalories. Or in some of the problems, we'll just refer to them as nutritional calories, which um, in, in this language is really kilocalories. So here's some specific heat capacities measured in joules per kilogram per degree C um, for various materials. In a half hour, a 65 kilogram jogger can generate 8 times 10 to the fifth joules of heat. The heat is removed from the body by various means, including the body's own temperature regulating mechanisms. If the heat were not removed, how much would the body temperature increase? So you're working out, you're creating all this, uh, this energy. And if you can't get rid of it, how much will your temperature rise? Well, <coughs> here's the formula. And we're actually looking at the temperature increase. So we can solve for delta T by dividing both sides by MC and then plugging in the values. This is the amount of heat generated that you're dumping into your body by the action of your muscles in working out. Divided by the mass of your body, 
um, divided by the specific heat capacity, and I believe we've used water here, 4186 is water, we've used 3500 uh, for the body's um, average specific heat capacity, all human body, here it is, 3500 on average. Okay, so there's that 3,500 3, joules per kilogram per degree C. Plug in the numbers. Um, the joules cancel. The, this is 1 over kilograms in the denominator, so that cancels this one. And it's 1 over 1 over, one over degree C, which is just degree C. So that's 3.5 degrees C. That's uh, something like 6, 7 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a lot. So you can be grateful for the um, mechanisms, perspiration, and other mechanisms that your body uses to, to release this heat. Calorimetry. Um, if there is no heat loss to the surroundings, and there's a lab that, that uh, does something like this. The heat loss by an, a hotter object equals the heat gained by the cooler one. So, uh, and eventually they reach thermal equilibrium, which means that their temperatures are the same. So that's what calorimetry is, is to uh, put it in an insulated container. What you'll do in the lab is you'll have two pieces of metal, one cold that you put in the freezer, one at room temperature, as I, as I remember. Put them in an insulated container, measure their initial temperatures, and see how the temperature varies with time and, and how long it takes for them to reach the same temperature. So a calorimeter is made of uh, 0.15 kilograms of aluminum, contains 0.2 kilograms of water. Initially, water and cup have the same temperature of 18 degrees C. A 0.04 kilogram mass of unknown material is heated to a temperature of 97 degrees and then added to the water. After the thermal, thermal equilibrium is reached, the temperature of the water, the cup, and the material is 22 degrees C. Find the specific heat capacity of the unknown material. Pretty cool problem. So, the heat added to the aluminum plus the heat added to the water is the heat uh, added by the unknown material. So, see if we've got this right. They were starting it at 18 degrees for the water and the cup. And the unknown material is 97 degrees. And then the final temperature is 22 degrees. So, um, we're going to add heat to the aluminum to bring it from 18 to 22 degrees. That's this. We're going to add heat to the water to take it from 18 to 22 degrees. And then we're going to take away heat <laughs> from the unknown material because it starts at 97 and goes down to 22. So this is the heat um, taken away from the unknown material. And, um, and the temperature difference is, well, okay, so then the heat, heat capacity, the, unknown, the specific heat capacity of the unknown quantity is this. That's what we're solving for here. And then we're going to plug in everything that we need. Um, we're plugging in the specific heat capacity <coughs> of aluminum the mass of the aluminum, the temperature change of the aluminum, which is from 18 to 22, that's four degrees. Here's the water, specific heat capacity of water, 4186, and it's one of the most important uh, ones that we'll see. You don't need to memorize it, but we'll see it a lot in the problems. Uh, if you need it on a, home, on, a, on a test, I'll give you that number. Um, times the mass of the water, 0.2, times the temperature change of the water, and then divided by the mass of the unknown substance, 0.04 kilograms, 
times the temperature change of the uh, unknown material. So it's going from 97 down to 22, and the difference between those two is 75 degrees uh, in magnitude. It's actually negative. But this will give us uh, 1,300 joules per kilogram per degree C, 